The book of 2 Kings, chapter number 5. I'll do the best I can to share with you what the Lord has put on my heart. It, this would be a, a big, big sermon uh, for me to try to preach at any time. But I want you to keep in mind that the, the thoughts, the words, the intent of the Word of God is timeless, it's inerrant, it's infallible. When we read the Bible, we're reading, we're reading what is uh, according to the Lord Jesus Christ, one of the few things that will never, ever pass away. Um, look at 2 Kings chapter number 5. Stand with me if you would. Friends who are 
who are missionaries to leper colonies. And it's amazing to me. I, I'm, 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 I'm amazed to see their love for these people to the point that they get in there and love on them, eat with them. And the character hounds it. I, I was just asking myself the question, how much would it be worth to you? How much would it be worth to us today to be saved from the disease of sin? What would it, what would you give to know that you never have to worry? You don't have to worry about dying and going to a place called hell. You see, it's a reality. This is not just a fairy tale. Right. And I'm thinking about this cancer. And I, and I mean, if I go into remission, it doesn't mean that I'm through. It means that I keep going back every year. And I have to do tests. They have to do checks. Make sure it does not resurface and coming is not coming back. And so that's man's ability to be able to deal with that with a, a life-threatening situation or a terminal situation. But here we've got a man who's a, a, a man of great uh, respect, of uh, great power, but he is a leper. How many people do you know today who are men of respect and power and position, and yet they are sinners? They are sinners, and if they die today in the position that they're in, they will spend eternity in hell. You see, that's the way uh, look at it in this real term. If, if Laban is not touched by God, he is a serious, he got a, an Israelite for a housemaid, and he's going to spend eternity in hell if God doesn't intervene in his life. Now, I want you to think about today, for every one of us, that's the situation we're in. Unless we've been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, everything about our lives is condemned. It is, God has already said, uh, what does it profit a man? If he should gain the whole world and yet lose his own soul. What does it profit you if you make more money in 2013 than you've ever made before and on New Year's Day 2014, you die and you're out in eternity and you have wealth built up in the bank that you've never had before. And yet you're out in eternity on January 1st, 2014 without Jesus. You are lost, hopeless, and none of your money goes with you. And it wouldn't matter if it did. It'd just burn up. I'm just giving you an honest, what is it worth to us today? to be healed, be cured. Matthew Henry said the methods for the healing of leprosy of sin are so plain that we are without excuse if we do not but observe them is believe and be saved. Yeah. Repent and be pardoned. Washed and be clean. Yeah, yeah. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. What can wash away my sin? Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So you see, we have a promise, we have a power, we have a a position. And quickly, I'm going to show you a couple of things in this passage today. Um, Naaman's pride almost kept him from the cure. Yeah. Now, if you look down here with me, the series is gone in verse number two. Uh, out by companies and brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. He said to her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that was in Samaria? For he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus saith the maid that is of the land of Israel. The king of Syria said, Go to, go. I'll send a letter to the king of Israel. He departed and took with him ten tops of silver, six thousand pieces of gold, and ten chains of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is coming to thee, behold, I am therewith. Sent Naaman, my servant, to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. It came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter, they had rent his clothes, said, Now, my God, to kill and to make alive, that this man doth send unto me to recover men of his leprosy. Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, 
had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, and he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Now, what, what was the first hindrance here, do you think, of what could have possibly been a great salvation? And I want you to look at this in the context. What could some of the hindrances be in our lives that we're not reaching people for Christ or that we're not coming to Christ ourselves? This Israelite maid, first of all, why in the world should she care what happened to Syria? Why should she care what happened to Naaman? What difference does it make for her that he dies and goes to hell? He's taken her out of her home country, stuck her in a place of servitude, and now she's a maid in the house of Naaman and his wife. Why should it not? You know, her predicament could have made her bitter about talking to anybody about God. You know, there's a lot of times today, I believe, in our lives and our predicament might cause us from being, I'll tell you all, man, the first two weeks I was out there, I was so ashamed or I was so sick, I couldn't even hardly talk to anybody about anything. And I, it, it really bothered me because I couldn't, I didn't feel like talking to anybody about, about the Lord. I got a few opportunities to do it. The Lord made me do it. In fact, the matter is, I was in a place where I just didn't feel, I was so sick, I didn't feel like it. I wonder what sort of predicaments might be in our lives today that makes us feel like, what? Hey, why should I tell them about the Lord? Why should I tell him? Why should I tell her? She's always made fun of me. He's always, you understand what I'm saying? Her predicament could have caused a problem. Secondly, uh, and why, you know, why take a chance to say anything? when it could have brought problems to her. Secondly, Naaman's position could have been a hindrance. We read he was an honorable, a mighty man. I want you to know his position was a hindrance. There's a lot of people today that are in a place of influence, that are in a place of power, who know that they need to be born again, who are afraid that if they do, it will hurt their position. It will hurt their standing. Now, isn't that amazing? There was a time when the United States of America, to be a Christian, was positive. That was a positive thing on your resume. But if you notice, anybody know the man, uh, uh, the Collins fellow that came out as the NBA and had come out and said he's gay? No. Have you noticed how many people are applauding him and patting him on the back and telling him what a wonderful thing he's done? Have you noticed how many did that for Tim Tito when he stood up and said, I'm a Christian? No, they, they run him down, made fun of him, called him a zealot, called him an idiot. Called, they did everything literally that they could to destroy that man's career. They made fun when he would deal with pray. Yeah. They made fun if he put scripture under his eyes. They made fun of everything to do. And now we have a professional basketball player who comes out and says, I'm an old homosexual. And everybody, oh, what a brave, brave individual. What a wonderful thing. How good it is. Well, I want you to know something today. It is terrible. It's horrible. It's pitiful. When our nation got to the point where we celebrate sin right. and deny Christ. Amen. And that's exactly where we are today. I want our young people to understand it is not to be admired. It is not to be held up in high esteem. I have much more respect for Tim Tebow. I'm not, I have no respect. I have no respect for anybody that will continue in sin and call it right and say God is pleased with it. Naaman's position could have been a hindrance. Um, now lastly, I want you to look here with me in verse number 11. Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out for me and stand and call the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the left. In other words, 
Does he not know who I am? I am Naaman, the captain of the host of Syria. Surely he'll come out. The man of God will come out to me. And he'll make some big show. And we might even have a band come by, play a song or two, talk about how wonderful Naaman is, and then lay his hand on the place. And, well, he, he should have known that, that he was not going to come out and touch him. He was a sinner. Somebody else needed to touch him. Right. Friend, I can touch you all day long. But until the Lord Jesus Christ touches your heart, you have no touch. I've heard great messages before that moved my heart. When I was lost, I heard messages that made me afraid. But one day, Jesus started dealing with my heart before I ever heard the message. And so when the message started, I didn't even know who the preacher was. I just went down and got saved. God is preparing your heart today. There are people here today who have never been born again. And if you die today without Christ, you'll die just like them as a leper as far as sin. It's an incurable disease. There's only one cure for it, and that's the blood of the Lamb of God. So Naaman's proposition could have brought compromise. Look at verse 12. Are not a bite and far, far, far rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them to be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage, and his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet bid thee do some great thing, would well, thou not have done it? How much rather than when he said to thee, Wash and be clean? <coughs> be careful today, church, that you're not distracted by all the ways that the world is saving salvation comes. About all the pomp and circumstance that they have. You know, their churches are adorned with great tapestries and all these things. And if you come and go through the program, if you reach a certain age, or if you're baptized as an infant, or whatever it might be, all these are ways to distract you from coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And so what was happening now to, to Naaman, he, he has to get down to the, to the point of realizing how much is it really worth to me to be clean? How much is it really, what does it matter? Well, you know what? The rivers abound and far apart. He's talking about in Syria. I mean, how much cleaner and nicer? Let's say the river Jordan is not, it's not, it's not your most beautiful river. It's not even a very large river until it's overflowed its banks. It's not a very wide river. You can pretty much walk across it in a lot of places. But you know, it sort of reminds you of 1 Corinthians when it says that the Lord has chosen the base things of the world to confound the wise. Yeah. God doesn't, God's not doing things today through the richest men in America. He's taking the poorest of us, putting the Spirit of God in us, and doing great things through men. That's what God does. Amen. We, we're not worried about how many chariots Naaman's got. God's not worried about all that. What he wants him to do is to do what he's about to do. And that is this. Look, in verse 14. Then went he down. There's your humility. There's the brokenness. Yeah. God uses broken things. I'm reading a book right now by me and M.R. DeHaan. It's just got me going around. But God uses broken things. Yeah. He dipped himself seven times in Jordan. Come on with me now. According to the saying of the man of God. Yeah. And his flesh came again like the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. How much is it worth to you? You know, if I had money and I could buy salvation and I knew it would keep me from going to hell, I'd give you every dime that I had. Amen. But what would that do for poor people and people like me who don't have money? God made this 
this 